In today's 15 minute fundamentals, we're going to continue looking at the financials capabilities of SAP Business One. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the process of entering transactions through the general ledger. Not the most exciting area, but certainly if you are going to be working with any accounting system for any length of time, you're going to eventually have to put through journal entries of some kind. So in SAP Business One, there's a number of different ways that you can enter your journal entries. What I'm going to do is take you through the basic journal entry process, then we're going to look at some of the different variations. If you think about it, the purpose of a journal entry is usually to make some kind of correction or adjustment inside the system. Maybe you've created some postings to a GL account and you've realized after the fact that they were posted to the wrong account. Maybe you've gone through your audit at the end of the financial year and the accountants have come back and they've said, hey, you need to make these adjusting journals. So that's where you're gonna be utilizing the journal entry capability. So when you're doing a journal entry, it's fairly straightforward. You go here into journal entries and then what you'll do is you'll come in and you'll specify the posting date of the journal and you'll notice you've actually got here a due date and a document date as well. This is because when you're doing journal entries, you can actually put through journal entries against business partners. So important to bear that in mind. We'll talk about that when, when we get into the details of looking at uh, accounts receivable and accounts payable. But for now, we've got our posting date, our due date, and our document date. Now the posting date's important because this is the date that's gonna impact on the financial period that uh, this transaction is going to be shown up against. Again, the important point here is to remember that if a period has been closed and locked, you will not be able to go ahead and post against it. So anyway, we've got our posting date. And what we can do is we can put in a transaction code if we want. Now, one of the things that you'll see in SAP Business One is you have the ability to create your own transaction codes. So if you want a specific way of being able to group those, um, those journal entries that you do, so when you're doing your reporting, you can identify them quickly and easily, that's where those transaction codes can help. And also you have three different references that you can utilize uh, against the transaction. So let's assume we're gonna leave all of those empty just for now, and then we're gonna come down here and we're going to simply put in the GL account that we want to impact on. So I'm gonna double click on the account name header so that when I go and do a search in here, it's actually going to search in that account. So let's say for example, I have uh, got to do an adjustment to my revenue from asset sales account. So I simply pick that account and then I nominate, okay, am I doing a debit or a credit adjustment to that account? So in this case, I am going to go and I'm going to do a debit adjustment. So let's say I've got $1,000 that was incorrectly posted to my uh, revenue from asset sales account. And so what I can do in here let's just make this feel a little bit bigger. Um, you can see I've got the ability to, to call up some remarks templates. So again, I can have standard sets of remarks to make the whole data entry process much, much easier. And uh, in a normal scenario, you might just be in a situation where this is a really straightforward transaction. So you don't need to put any of this other information in here. Um, you know, things like the branch, um, the product line and so on. We're just gonna focus on a very standard transaction and then you're gonna grab the other side of that transaction. Let's say the other side of my transaction was my assets under construction account. So a transaction was incorrectly posted. So now all I have to do if I want to, the system knows that the journal has to be correctly balanced. So what I can do if I want is I can simply click double click here on the credit line and it will automatically put that balancing entry there against the credit. So of course you can have as many transactions as you want on the journal entry. The main thing is that they must all be on the same posting date and the journal entry must balance. Your debits must equal your credits. So this is one way of putting in those transactions, but what you can then do is you can also go up here and you can say, I'm gonna expand my editing mode. 
And what this now does is this gives me the ability to go in and put more detail against each one of those lines. So you can see now rather than having one set of transaction codes and reference numbers and so on that applies to all of the, um, the entries in the journal entry, I can go in and I can specify different ones for each of these. Okay, so again the key to this is flexibility. Now not only can you go ahead and put that information against the lines, but what you can do when you've got your journal entry here, you can right click and you've got the ability to come in here and you can create a new activity. So you can record an activity then that ties back to this journal entry. Maybe you, were, you had a conversation, a phone call with your external auditors. Uh, maybe you had a, um, a discussion with uh, you, the, the CFO of the organization and you just wanna make sure that you've got really effective documentation of why this transaction was done. Well, that's the advantage of uh, being able to attach an activity to that journal entry. So even if it's just something as simple as a note, I could put in here the details of the note and then attach that to the journal entry and away I go. But let's assume that's all good. Uh, all I have to do now is just click my add button and that's it, my journal entry is now posted. It doesn't get much simpler than that. All right, so we looked at a lot of the different aspects of that, but your journal entries can be very, very simple. Now, let's take a look at the next scenario. You might be in a situation where you wanna create what are called journal vouchers. So journal vouchers are exactly the same as journal entries, except they don't actually create any adjustments or any the transaction doesn't hit the GL until such time as you go ahead and you post the voucher. So you can go here and you can say, add a new journal entry to the voucher. Same scenario as we were doing before. All the same fields are available for you. I can come in here and I can pick my accounts again. Let's say I'm gonna adjust my cash on hand account and I'm going to put through uh, a credit of $5. And then on the other side of that is going to be my bank fees. So I'll go in here and see if I've got a bank charges account. There we go, there's a bank charges transaction and I simply click on here and I put in a debit. So now what I can do is I can come in here and I can say add that to the voucher and so that transaction is now against the voucher and I can now close that. You'll see now that I have my journal voucher number one and it has a total value of transactions on here of $5. So now I can go and add entries to that existing voucher so I can continue to add transactions to that voucher until such time as I'm ready to post it, in which case I will just come here and click on post voucher and it's gonna then ask me, do you wanna save this journal voucher to the permanent file? And I'll say yes, and that's now done. So that's the equivalent, like a two-step journal entry. I create the transactions, get them all ready, make sure I'm happy with it, and of course, I can then go and print out a report showing me what's in that journal voucher, and then I will go ahead and post that journal voucher, and it becomes a journal entry. Fairly straightforward, right? A couple of the other things that you can do in here is you have the ability to create what are called posting templates. Now the great thing about posting templates is that what you can do is you can define what are the, the transactions that you wanna do and you can say these posting templates, for example, could be every month you might have to post your rent and so your rent might get split between three different accounts. So what you can do is you can create a posting template, you can give it a code, so I'm gonna call this is my rent uh, template, and I'm gonna say this is my monthly rental entry, just for the sake of the exercise. And then I can come in here and I can just specify what are my accounts that are gonna be impacted here. And so I know that the account for that is my office and building rent, so I can select that account. And then I know the other side of this transaction is going to be my cash at bank. So again, I'll do a look up here, and there it is, it's gonna be my cash at bank account, my checking account. Now what I can do is I can say, you know what, I'm gonna put 100% of the debit to this account, and 100% of the credit to this account. 
But what I'm also able to do is I could go in here and I could say, you know what? I'm actually only gonna put 50% against this account because I know I have another account in here where I'm gonna post the other 50% of that amount to. So again, let's go and do a lookup. Let's grab our account name. And we've got office and building rent. And so maybe I've got the other amount is gonna go against my other administrative costs. So I'll pick my other administrative costs and I know I'm gonna put 50% against that. So you see how that's automatically picked up that 50%. So now what I can do is I can save that posting template and then when the month comes or the time comes around where I need to do my posting, I can simply come here into my journal entry screen. I dive down here into my template type and this is a percentage template because remember I put those percentages. I click here on my template lookup. There's my templates, my monthly rental entry. So I select that and it's now asking me all right, this is the amount, is 50%, 100%. So what I can do is I simply come in here and I can specify the amount. So I'll put in here $100. And you'll now see on the basis of that, it's automatically then calculated the other components of the transaction. It knows that this was 50% as well. It knows that was 100%. So the transaction is created and now I simply say add and that's it. It's now done. Makes it really easy for you to set up those standing journals so that anybody in the team can come in and do those transactions quickly and easily without spending too much time worrying about am I posting this to the right account. So the final thing we'll look at now is our recurring postings. So let's just close down our journal entry now because we're finished there. Let's go and take a look at recurring postings. So the idea behind recurring postings is you might have a transaction that needs to be posted a certain number of times. You might have a transaction that needs to be posted. The same transaction occurs on the same day every week or the same day every month or whatever the case may be. So what the recurring postings allows you to do is it allows you to create that and then you can set the system up so that it will automatically remind you when those recurring postings are due. So let's say for example, I have my payroll transactions. So I can go in here and I can call this payroll. I'm gonna cheat here because I actually already have some uh, recurring postings set up for payroll. I'm gonna show you those in a second. But I go in here and I put in that it is my payroll transactions. And then very, very simple, I come in here pick my transactions and I've got my payroll so I might have my payroll expense for direct labor costs and I let's say it's going to be a thousand dollars but now the good thing about this is when I go and do my recurring postings I can still come in and adjust this amount at the time of doing the recurring posting so let's say it's a thousand dollars and then we'll come back in here and we'll say, okay, what's the other side of our transaction? And again, we've got our cash at bank account and that's gonna be a thousand dollar credit. All right, so that's it. That's my transaction all set up. But now I specify what's the frequency. How often is this transaction going to occur? So you can see I've got these different choices. I've got daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and so on. And so I can say this is gonna happen every week I've got my payroll expense and it's going to happen on a Thursday. All right, the next execution is going to be on the 3rd, uh, sorry, on the 8th of the 3rd. I've got to get my date formats right. Uh, so next one's going to be on the 8th of the 3rd. And then I can come in here and I can say, you know what, this is valid until, uh, let's say it's going to go through every Thursday until go through till July and the last Thursday in July is the 26th and so that will I will get that reminder every Thursday to do those recurring postings okay and then I can simply say add every Thursday if I've got my recurring posting set up so that they pop up 
for me on my screen when I first log in. It's going to come up on the Thursday and remind me I've got to do my recurring postings. Now you can come in here as well as you can come in and you can see show me my recurring postings. So I can see all the recurring postings that I have there that need to be entered. So this is all of the recurring postings that have already been created but I have not yet entered those transactions. All right. So you can call that up at any time. And this is the this is the screen that you're gonna see every day if you have set the system up to give you those recurring postings when you sign in. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's it. That's a look at a couple of those different kinds of ways of entering transactions into the general ledger. Now there's a few more detailed ways of doing that. Uh, and we will go in and look at that when we start looking at, at some of the more detailed aspects of the GL module.